Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, Bible journaler here on YouTube. And today I'm going to take the page that I did last week that was from a pre-printed Bible and use it for inspiration for a new page in my interleave Bible. A lot of people ask, how do you take an idea and just change it? Because I'm always recommending you take any ideas that I give you here on YouTube and use them as a seed for what God wants to do with you instead of just replicating things. And for this one, I liked the dark cloud at the top, that burst of sunlight. And as I've prayed about it this week, God has brought other things to mind. So this is going to be a prayer page for me, praying for some particular people in my life. And the verse is all about seeing that great light after walking in darkness. So I want that dark cloud at the top, but this amazing sun coming up from the bottom. So I'm using a couple of paint colors, this watercolors. I'm using Aussie red gold and new gamboge to make a slow transition from a dark color down at the bottom upward and using more and more water so it just gets softer and makes a, what's called a gradation going from one color transitioning to another. So this is transitioning up to very, very pale. And I even included it on the right hand side too. To dry it, because I was impatient, <laughs> I used my hot air gun, you can use a hair dryer or something, but lift up the page so you're not putting that heat down on your whole Bible because that's just going to wrinkle all the pages. Water and heat give you wrinkles. That's just the recipe for it. And when we're doing watercolor in our Bible, we end up with that. I don't use any gesso on mine, by the way. I get that question pretty regularly. And I have tons of watercolor videos here on YouTube, and this is my process. I paint, I iron it, and... I, I make sure it's dry before I this, put this paper on top because that will lift some of the color if the color is wet. And the iron is set on, I don't know, I think it's cotton for 20 seconds, something like that on each page. Not a big deal. Just don't leave it down there long because you don't want to burn the paper, of course. But having a sheet of paper on top and below protects things a little bit. So it's not perfect, but it's good enough uh, ironing-wise because... It will never be perfection. And now I'm going to add the clouds. You can, you know, use all different kinds of paints to do this. You can, if you want just a thick black cloud, you can use acrylic on top of this. And I'm going to use my watercolors. And the scallops are what's from the inspiration piece. They just had a big scallop cloud at the top. Bada boom, bada bing. I'm going to make mine more realistic. But I'm also going to make it darker as I go. Look how light that grayish color comes out because I had a lot of water in my brush. But I, w I knew I was going to make some clouds cascading down. I didn't want this to be a scallop. I just wanted that ominous big cloud at the top. And I'm just going to use more water with my paint to have sort of a gray color. And as I move down the page, I'm just going to use more and more water in my brush you can even dab some of it off if you get too much color on it with a baby wipe or a paper towel and soften that and make the clouds at the top really thick and heavy and then down at the bottom it's just going to be more wispy, a little lighter in color and more horizontal because that'll make them look like they've got some distance going on. So I'm going to dry this and add another color layer to it so that I can add a, a little more richness to that cloud at the top. I want that, that one to be really big and heavy. But while I do that, I thought I'd tell you what I've been praying about this week. I have had a few friends who have gotten lost in conspiracy theory landmines that have been set for them, I guess, on Facebook. And I have been absolutely shocked at how easily they cast Jesus aside to believe an anonymous internet crazy thing and have been posting about that. And I've just been like, Lord, what do I do? How, how do we keep other believers from, from getting distracted from the message of Christ? How do we get them to see you, Jesus, and not whatever this craziness is that sounds good? It sounds like it explains the whole world to them. And that's what they've said, is they finally see what's really going on, and it's not true. It's not true. It's not biblical, and they're damaging the witness of Christ, and I just don't know what to do. And as I was 
praying about using this particular piece of art this week, the Lord just kept saying, shine the light. Shine the light. Let them see the light of Christ. Because this world is messy. It's got a lot of people lying to us, a lot of people trying to take us off the, the path that Christ has set us on. And it's important for us to constantly recalibrate our lives back to the light, back to Jesus, back to what he has done for us on the cross, and not get lost and distracted by somebody who's making something up on the internet. <laughs> it's just crazy. I've even found myself doing some research on this, this conspiracy theory stuff, and there are now discussions on Christian websites and among pastors trying to figure out how to pull their congregations back from this abyss that they're finding. And I'm, I'm edified to hear that pastors are aware of this and are trying to do something about it, but I can't do much. I can't go physically turn off somebody's computer and say, stop reading the crazy stuff. But I can shine the light of Christ. I can give them truth. I can make them aware of what it is and and the wrong things you know it's it's just stuff about people eating children and I just weird weird crazy stuff don't look it up if you don't know about it already but if you see a brother or sister who's falling by the wayside your job my job is to shine the light of Christ for them remind them what they believe remind them the truth that is Christ and that's what that's what my prayer is on this page So you saw I painted a landscape at the bottom. I just kind of threw the same black colors right over top of the yellow. And the black has a little bit of blue in it. So it kind of turns into this murky kind of color. That's the murky land we live in. The land of sin and yuck and mess. And we have clouds of yuck overhead. And the one place that we keep our focus is on the light. The light that is before us that we know is the truth. We know the explanation for the world. God made the world. He told us there would be darkness. He told us there was just going to be problems. This is not a perfect place, but he's the one with the answers, not uh, some board on Reddit or some blog or whatever that those other things are. He's told us where the truth is. So I wanted to really focus on the not the smallness of Christ in this, that small yellow place, but the fact that that yellow, that, that light can burst out and start to take over that darkness and where it's grabbed hold of us. Because even in the, the ground, there's light filtering through. There's still light there for even those who are lost, that, that God can get to them, and he can get to them through us. We're the ones that he's going to use to speak into their lives, whether it's by being a prayer warrior on their behalf or by talking with them, by presenting the truth to them. And that's that's what I decided to write out as my prayer on the, the land here to, to just pour my heart out that that all who walk in the crazy darkness would come to really truly see the great light that is Christ and the one who has saved them and they don't have to look to the internet to find those things but they can find the truth in scripture they can find the truth by asking for the truth from the Holy Spirit the one who gives it all to us all right that's it for me today I'll see you guys again next week take care bye-bye